dots appeared on the map. You've seen a ghost walk down the hallway and through a closed door. Shall we start with any start of mystery moves? Because I know Chloe has one. I'm not sure if anyone else took one. Mine says when you are in good standing with your sect, at the beginning of each mystery, roll plus charm. It's a mixed success. So on a 7 to 9, you get a mission associated with the mystery, and if you do it, you'll get some info or help too. Okay, just as you see that ghost disappearing, your phone goes. It's miraculously under coverage right now to get a message from your handler saying some of the Eternium mystics have just detected uh, a form of summoning activity happening at your location. Can you please stop at whatever it is and, and find out what's going on? Well, we will investigate. We're not responsible for it, so we'll see who is. I should hope not. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that Liam, not thinking anything supernatural, just saying like, oh, there's another person here and seeing like the trail of a dress that I've gotten up and I've walked to the door and I'm knocking on it. Uh, Ma'am, Liam's uh, uh, not open right now. Hello. And I'm knocking on the door and like starting to jiggle the handle. Uh, it's, it's unlocked. I open it. It's like an old like parlor or drawing room. And in it, you see this ghost of, of this woman, like I said, it's like 1940s garb and... She seems to be, she's gesturing and talking as if there were other people in the room with her. You can't hear anything. And some of the gestures have a bit of a, like, ritualistic or spell-like look to them. But that's all you can tell. Clearly seeing for the first time and, like, seeing that she's somewhat transparent. Uh, She's also, like, standing through a coffee table. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Very slowly closes the door. (laughs) I don't think that's the last person that she's in there standing in the middle of a coffee table, and I don't mean like at a party. I don't know. That seems pretty lost to me. She definitely <laughs> lost something. Oh, like a uh, corporeal form, you mean? <laughs> Chloe will hurry to uh, to the door to s- see if that's still what's going on in there. Okay, so you open the door again, mm-hmm. and now uh, she's like, looks really panicked. It's like she's trying to hold something off and like push something off her and she's screaming. But we can't see anything. You can't see anything else, just her. Is she making noise or? No, like... she's completely silent. Uh, you do see some tears appearing in her clothes and blood and then she falls and disappears. My word. Did anybody else see this? Was uh, Liam still there at the door? I think you're still by the door, yeah. Yeah. EK and Onyx, were you, like, coming down the hall to check it out as well? Or? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think after seeing uh, the ghost women just, like, fall to the floor, I think EK's got to look towards the direction the ghost came from. Um, it looks like she came in from one of the side doors from uh, the veranda at the side of the house. I think I'm going to look at onyx and have you seen this happen before and i think the answer is probably yes like you have seen other ghosts here but you're not sure if you've seen this one before and that's probably true for liam too but maybe you just thought there were people who got lost yeah i mean yeah me and gladys have poker nights sometimes um (laughs) but uh i'm not sure i've seen that one before thinking back to the map um and the black marks appearing yeah does one of the black marks happened to line up with either the room that she just went into or the room she came from? No, not really. That that kind of just spread around the gardens uh, haphazardly. Uh, there are six of those marks, although you think there might have been more when you saw it a few minutes ago. Or maybe less. Uh, it's not clear. I think I would like to use magic to observe another place or time. I would like to see what preceded this. Uh, like, follow her backwards. Oh, uh, to see where the ghost first came from? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so what does it look like when you cast the spell to um, track back the ghost's history? Uh, this is a really quick cast with uh, a hand and, you know, the drawing in the air and uh, there's a, a faint glittering tracery that, that just uh, follows the outline of, of the glyph. I might say it requires a weird material as well. So what what strange and rare supply do you need to use up a bit of to do this? Okay, it's a, it, it uses it up, so it's not like a piece of jewellery. or. Yeah, I think you've only come with enough to do this once. Okay. Um, uh, maybe a rare mineral or a herb or something? Uh, yeah, I, t- I have a little... Um, I had a little uh, 
pillbox with a crushed chrysolite. It's expensive, so I don't yeah. have a whole lot. So and I think like when you do the gesture and empty it out, it kind of coalesces to show you the path the ghost took. Nice. Cool. Assuming it works. <laughs> Assuming it works. Well, normally that's what happens, if you can yeah. see normally. Oh, it's a Dan! Woohoo! Okay, so you follow the ghost as it walked back to- towards the veranda, and it's kind of weird for everyone seeing the like crystalline dust outlining where the ghost came from walking backwards. And as it gets to the veranda, it kind of walks through the glass door, and you just see it, like, dissolves. So it just like came slowly came into being as it was already walking along the corridor. It has a look of kind of determination, like it was it had been planning something and was ready to do it as it came along the corridor. Like you know, there's something happening that it was ready for. And from what I saw, it seems like it would have been ambushed by uh, uh, some some creature or enemy it didn't see. Yeah. Well, before you got over here, Chloe, she was doing some kind of uh, like a hand gesture, kind of like what you just did. If someone wants to investigate to try and interpret what you've seen, that's fine with me. Although I think may- you're not going to get a lot of detail out of this one ghost sighting. I'll give it a shot. Okay, so interpreting what you know of ghosts in this house. Here's something that might be... You, you tell me if this works. So... Like we said earlier, there are other ghosts that are, like, in and out of here. I've interacted with them before in some capacity. Could I try to, like, I don't want to say summon one, but just, like, say, hey, have any of you ghosts that I've interacted with before seen this ghost and know what the heck she's doing? There aren't any of them around at the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. What I think you could do is look back through your memories to see if any of the other ghosts have mentioned something that might relate to this. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's legit here. That's a four. What you remember is there's a thing that struck you as a bit odd in your interactions with the ghosts here, which is like, there are ghosts from like the 1960s and the 1970s and the 1980s, and there are ghosts from like the 1880s and the 1890s and the 1900s, but there's a gap there. You've not seen any ghosts from like that early 20th century decades, including when this one was from. I'm not sure exactly what she was doing or how it fully connects, but I know that there's sort of a gap of how uh, old these spirits are, um, so that might be something to take note of. At this point, you all hear a noise, uh, something like a bunch of insects or a bunch of rats, like lots of skittering, creepy, like, scratchy noises. Feels like they're in the walls or in the roof. I take the gun from off of my back. We've been having a problem lately with all kinds of infestations. Uh, Rats and raccoons. It sounds like we've got a whole nest of them up there. Okay, a central heating vent gets pushed off and like this horde of things come out. What they are, they're about about, like 20 centimeters long. They're kind of like a big like bug spider thing. Um, There are a lot of them um, and they've got like Big chompy teeth at the front and like a stingery tail at the back and they like <laughs> through the corridor um, and are charging towards you to, to bite you from the look of it. Oh, gross. Arm cannon. <laughs> <laughs> EK is shooting them with the hand cannon. Liam, are you going to shoot them with your rifle? Yeah, I think so. I instinctively... They are pretty close. So yeah. bear that in mind. Okay. Uh, Onyx and Chloe? From my uh, little pocket dimension that I pull things from, reach in and grab my uh, hammer and just start going to town. Um, Okay, so we're just going to fight creepy things. They came at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. This is (laughs) self They invaded the HVAC. I'm not happy about it. (laughs) Um, uh, How about we do this as one person can take the lead and roll kick some ass and uh, the others can help. And we'll uh, resolve it in one one shot then. Because these things individually, they're not that tough. It's like the whole swarm of them you're fighting. I'll take lead on this. Someone else can roll help out and may give you a bonus. Uh, So uh, who would like to roll help out then? I actually have a move, so I don't have to roll it. Power of heart, uh, when fighting a monster and you help someone, don't roll plus cool. You automatically help as if you had rolled a 10 plus. So plus one forward? That's a 14. So... Between the three of you, I'm not sure if Chloe had got a weapon out to get involved, but it's kind of unnecessary. Like, you shoot, squish, um, explode, 
all these things um, and and deal with that swarm. Um, so you've now got a big mess of like horrible bug parts, uh, bullet holes and things all through the hallway, uh, smashed, smashed wall panels from the hammer and so on. Um, so what do you want to take as your extra option? Do you want to take less harm? Yeah, suffer less harm. Okay, so can each of you then take one harm from assorted bug bites? Is that armor piercing or no? No, it is not. Cool. Anybody else notice the height of those things seem reasonably close to what it was that ghost woman was fighting off? Curiouser and curiouser. I think I would like to investigate a mystery. You're going to examine these... Parts? Yes, it's a. Uh, I'm just going to examine them, uh, not touching them with my fingers, uh, and also ex- examine like are they corrosive? Are they damaging the the floor under? It is a failure. What you notice about them initially, like there's no like corrosiveness. Um, you do think you see some like venom sacs for their stinger, so they may be may be venomous, but. The main thing you notice as you're down there checking bits on the ground is like you glance up at the central heating vent they came out of and you see that there's more of their like, I mean, they've got a lot of eyes. You can see more of those eyes glistening back at you and you see them scurry away. Uh Uh-oh, we're not done with them. What do you mean? I would suggest that everybody uh, keep their weapons with them. And you can hear more movement in the walls and the vents. Can I look at that map again? Like, where was the black spotches on the map? Was it just random, or...? Uh, They seem to be kind of randomly spread around the gardens. And none of them are in the house. Uh, There's eight spots now. Oh, the spots have increased? And they're all in the garden? Yeah. I think we should take a look in the garden, then. It seems like there's something happening, unless there's a pen that's leaking in your pocket, Liam. I don't got one made of magic ink, because there was only five, and then there was six, now there's eight, and then there was four, now there's eight again. I think we need to go to the garden. It's pretty easy to find the general area where what are the, the closest of the, the dots is. However, like I say, snow, mud, it, it's, it's difficult to find here. So I'll ask for probably, uh, I think, an investigative mystery role just to find, like, track down where the dot maps to in the actual garden from someone. Oh my <laughs> gosh, we are doing so bad. I rolled a two. You're all, like, searching around the area, like, for now. Yeah, it must be somewhere around here. When EK, underneath you, the ground collapses and you fall into a big nest full of those things. There are oh, like hundreds gross. or thousands of them down here. Um, oh. They just jump on top of you and start biting you. So take two harm right away. Armor piercing? No. no All right, they are cool, not armor piercing. They're just horrible. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so EK just fell into a hole and you hear like, ah, chomp, chomp, chomp. How, how like deep is the hole? Like, can I reach EK from where I am right yeah, now? Yeah, it's pretty deep. You've got to reach down into it even though EK is huge, but things are coming out the top as well. Like they're coming onto the surface too. Oh, great. Oh, <laughs> great. I think at this point, I think I just take out my sledgehammer and just start smashing. So you're not going to take the hand pulling pulling you out to the surface? I think that was kind of my like almost immediate reaction of just like, oh, yep, cool. I fell down. Mm-hmm. These bugs yeah. jumped on me. Cool. Roll, roll kick ass. All right. That's a mixed success. That's an eight. Uh, my sledgehammer does three harm. So you take two harm from them, and you do three harm to them? I'm just not taking any damage. Because yeah. I love... Should I feel that? I love this. I love not taking damage. Yeah, no, like that, they're biting your skin, but your skin's thick, right? <laughs> Back on the surface, so Onyx, I think you're closest, because you were thinking of, of reaching a hand down, and there's bugs mm-hmm. coming out. Some bugs for everybody. <laughs> there is bugs for everybody. Yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, I uh, I would like to enchant the uh, sledgehammer, make it even more terrifying. I'm not sure you can do that in the middle of a fight. Okay. It feels like it needs a bit of time to me. Um, unless you get both Liam and Onyx to help you cast the spell so that you can focus it and send it down to the sledgehammer. Mm. which might mean you get bitten by bugs while you're doing that. Would it be faster if I enchanted a, a, a weapon used by Onyx or Leah? Yeah, because they're not in the middle of a fight, so you could take the weapon and take it like 30 seconds to enchant it for the moment. What are you guys using? 
Yeah, I have my hammer. It's at my side right now. Mm -hmm. Onyx is about to try to get EK out Mm -hmm. uh, instead of trying to fight these bugs. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. I I think you try to turn to Liam and uh, he is not there. I have used panic button. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Because these bugs are, there's too many. (laughs) This is not what I was was hired for. We can't kill all these bugs. (laughs) Well, let's let's resolve the panic button roll first. A six. <laughs> so much experience. Uh, so, what, what oh route were you using to get away? I think I was trying to weave my way through the gardens to get to a spot like that I remembered on the map didn't have one of these weird black ink blotches. Right. Uh, and on a miss, I am caught halfway. Okay, you're heading for an area that's free of them, but a, a number of them are chasing you. Oh, God. So they they're not like. They haven't caught up yet, but they're, they're yeah. coming for you. But there's not that many compared to how many you left behind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, back to Chloe. Are you going to enchant anything, or shall we see if Onyx can haul EK out of this bug hole? Uh, you know, I'm not good at it, but I will try to help him pull uh, EK out. Okay, cool. You want to roll, roll help out, and then Onyx, you can roll act under pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not good. That's a four. <laughs> Oh my god. Cool. Okay, Onyx, are you going to haul EK out of there? Yeah, yeah, I think... Actually, I'm going to try to do something else instead okay. of... Well, yeah, it looks like uh, Chloe maybe got in the way of trying to actually um, give you a good lift anyway, so... So, Onyx, um, seeing sort of the angle that uh, EK is at and thinking about trying to pull them up out of this, thinks, honestly, the best route is to jump in. Okay. Um... <laughs> So Onyx jumps into the hole with EK, quickly does um, a, like, just draws in front of him a doorway and tries to pull EK through using angel wings. Yeah, no, that works. And Chloe, I think you're left with a bunch of bugs around you with no other targets. (laughs) Okay, roll. Get him off of me! Roll for angel wings, please. Uh, nine. Um... So you don't quite manage it. Either you're all separated or you all appear in the wrong place. Oh, well. Well, you won't be in the hole anymore. (laughs) Do you have a preference? The place that uh, Onyx was aiming was outside of the, like, garden area, honestly. So I'm not fully sure what happens there. (laughs) Where are we going? EK. Uh Uh-huh. You appear in your room. Oh, okay. Onyx, you appear... In a restaurant in London. <laughs> like, at a table, um, across from another celebrity of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Majors. Um, oh. <laughs> My God. Well, he knows all about monsters. Uh, and and the, ask him uh, for the waiter, waiter hands you a menu. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm in the right. Oh, wait. They have fries here. Shit. No, I think I need to go back. I'm sorry. Um, real quick, takes a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> and then Angel Wings out uh, back to the, to the house. Uh, so where are you going back to on the house? Can you see the garden from the front steps of the house? Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm on the front steps of the house. Cool. Yeah, so you've been a few minutes. Back to Chloe. Okay, you've, you're surrounded by too many, but not that many bugs. What are you doing? Um, I think it's time to use magic again. I think it's too late to bar a, a place or portal to a specific type of creature, huh? You could probably improvise something to, like, just quickly make a circle around yourself to keep them out. Okay, then, yes, that's what I will do. I probably have to, like, swat some away to, in order to yeah. draw, or kick with my foot probably is smarter. And yeah. Yeah, that's... They're horrible. Uh, why don't you do act under pressure first to see if any of them manage to bite you while you're clearing them away, and then uh, then use magic to see if you. Thank make the you circle. for offering to give me experience. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just let them bite you. Oh hey, that works. Okay, so you get bitten by one of them for one harm. And uh, yes, I was going to use magic. Yeah. And I forgot before that I I have mystic, so I can take plus one forward when I use magic. So. Oh, yeah weird plus one it's a 10 you quickly draw a circle on the ground around you and charge it with energy to keep these things out um now because you're not exactly sure on their nature 
you don't think it's going to last that long. But, um, mm. you know, once they realize they can't get at you, they, they kind of seem to lose interest and start heading back to their hole. Uh, Liam, you were running away from just a few bugs. What was your, <laughs> how do you want to get away from these ones? Yeah, I think that, like, these bugs have started popping up. There's weird spots on the map. We saw this woman, um, and I, I've seen a lot here on the grounds, but th- never this. I want to try and just kind of consult with myself and, and figure out where to go. I want to use um, trust your gut uh, instead of oh, instead of okay. use magic um, and to try and figure out, like, where should I go? I know this place. Is there a place I can go to figure out what's going on? That's the uh, ultimate weird move. Yeah. <laughs> Roll20 doesn't like us today, guys. It does not. <laughs> oh, just think of all the experience points you're getting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a six. The obvious thing is to go back to that room where the ghost was reenacting whatever it was and like see if you can find more information there, right? Yeah, that's where this all started, that room, so... Yep. Uh, I'll start <laughs> running back into the house. Yeah, so you can outdistance the re- few remaining bugs as as you do that. Um, you do notice as you're going, like, running through the, the snow and the mud, like, they do seem to be slowing down as they go and, like, running out of energy. I, like, slow down a little bit as I'm running to, like, see if they... No, they're definitely, like, they're, they're like, losing a bit of stamina or something. Like, they they tr- they look like they're trying hard. They're just running out of energy. Huh. Um, does it seem like it's maybe a, a distance from their spot of origin? Is it the cold? Is it the snow? Uh, roll investigate. <laughs> uh, that is a five. Okay. You're, like, getting more curious and you're watching them and, like, you slow down and you, like, turn around and, like, get a bit closer. And one of them jumps at you and bites you. And your impression... So, well, take two harm. Yeah. Oh, no, just one harm because it's just one of them, not a whole group. And um, your impression is... They were tricking you. Oh. God. Cunning little things. Oh. No, these things are so smart. Oh. Everyone be careful. <laughs> okay, so EK and Onyx are currently back at the house, um, recovering from escape and teleporting around the place. Is there a can of Lysol somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably like um, look in a storeroom and you find like really, really old disinfectant. That'll work. I take that. I go in my bag and fish for a lighter. <laughs> oh, yeah, yep. And then I'm just going to go back into the garden. It's like, did someone call for an exterminator? And just, like, jump into the hole and just <laughs> light them up. <laughs> just cool. go right back um, in and just light them up. So as you're heading back out, you pass Liam coming the other way. Be careful. I've got intelligence behind these beady eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Onyx, uh, you appear back on the front porch at this point, seeing these two mm-hmm. in the distance. So L- Liam's out at this point. Yeah, Liam's coming towards you and EK's heading away. Chloe is nowhere to be seen Correct. currently, yep. I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to use the heck out of this move. I'm going to angel in again. <laughs> yep, where to? Uh, to go directly to Chloe, because uh, I can go to a person. Okay, uh, did Chloe make the circle big enough for two? If you'd been there, I would have. Now we have to squeeze. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, There's like two or three of the little bugs still lurking around, but most of them have returned to their hole or nest or burrow or whatever it is. We need to go now. (laughs) It looks safe enough to run for it now. There there aren't very many of them. Yeah, yeah. I I think Onyx is like trying to grab like Chloe by the hand and just like... Chloe wants to investigate a mystery. Oh, well, yeah. (laughs) What did you want to investigate? I would like to figure out what sort of creatures they are. Oh, sure. You've got plenty of time to um, observe them, so roll it. That's a middling success with an eight. I get uh, one hold, so I get to ask that one question. What sort of creature is it? What you're definitely sure of is that they are not natural terrestrial creatures. They are some kind of mystical or otherworldly summoned things. And yes, we had word there was an actual summoning, so somebody's bringing those here. Okay, EK, you arrive back at the nest where Chloe and Onyx are standing around. Um, uh, who knows what they're doing? Um, you're going to go and blow them up? Yeah, I'm going in the hole and setting them all ablaze. 
Cool. Give me a roll. Kick ass. Can I add a plus one from doing the doing the the someone call an exterminator <laughs> using my move? Uh, why so serious? <laughs> <It's definitely. laughs> All right. <laughs> Hell yeah! Success with an eleven. You set fire to everything that's down that hole, and you would take. I guess one harm in return. Uh, oh, actually, do you want to do extra harm or take less? I'm going to gain the advantage and take one forward. Okay, so you torch it. You get a few bites, so two harm. And what you realize is that although you've torched all the critters, there's like right at the bottom, there's some kind of like weird crystalline nodule that's unharmed by the fire still remaining. Can I take it? Uh, it's kind of stuck to the ground, like you pull it, and it's 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 like it's connected to something. It's more like it's like one piece that's sticking out of something underground. I am gonna use my axe and and just smash it. Yep. Don't think you need to roll for that. You can just do it, and it kind of explodes, and there's all this like horrible like blue black goo inside it that kind of goes a bit over your shoes and ah. generally makes a mess. And it's kind of a, it's kind of really like sticky and nasty, and you get a sense it's kind of moving, like it's maybe sort of alive. Mm, I don't like that. Okay, what you see is like some of it starts to coalesce and form itself into a new one of those creatures. A new one of the the bugs. Yeah. So the goo's like making itself into a bug. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna set it on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. The, the half form bug quickly burns up. Um, and you can kind of set fire to all that goo and get out of the hole if you'd like. Yeah. Is there a way to, like, scoop up the ooze of the bug and kind of, like, do, like, a like a, like a supernatural scan of it or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could do that with use magic, yeah. With use magic? Or some kind of weird science thing. You can definitely take a sample of it for further analysis, because there are yeah, quite a few squished I, bugs around here. Yeah, I think we're going to take a sample of it, because, like, it's clearly not a normal bug is there like a lone scurrying bug somewhere there's that like one or two that have managed to ev- evade capture so far or squishing can i go into my little demi pi- plane pocket dimension pull out a mason jar and scoop it into it uh, make me an act under pressure to grab it yes can do I am going to use luck because <laughs> okay. I am tired of feeling. <laughs> cool. Okay, so you jar it. You've got one in a jar. I want to cut to Liam again now. Yeah. So Liam, you have gone back to the room where it all started, right? Because obviously that's where you're going to find out more. Yeah, and I'm going to use my last move and mark experience because uh, I've gone off to check out something scary by myself. Okay, so you you get there and you see the ghost of the woman enter the room again, just like before. Come to stand in the middle where the coffee table is. When I see where her focus is, I'm going to like start moving the coffee table and like like trying to look at like if there's a rug in the way or anything. Okay, once again, she starts, she's obviously talking, but you can't hear anything. She starts gesturing. It looks like she's talking to some other people as well. And if you want to make either read a bad situation or investigate a mystery, this is a good opportunity to do so. Yeah, I think I want to try to like understand what it is she's doing okay so investigating all right eight one question what is being concealed here as you observe her actions you figure out there were five of them in the room like she's obviously talking to four other people Mm. um it looks like they were in a circle ish and there's a sense of when she's talking and gesturing that there might be a call and response thing going on of people taking their turns Mm mm-hmm Um, It looks to you very much like what few spells you've seen cast by um, some of the people also around this house. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a point at which her expression changes from deep concentration and obviously like focus on this to uncertainty and shock um, and looks like a bit of panic maybe. And then you see the thing where she's obviously getting attacked by some small creatures Seems like uh-huh. quite a few of them, and again, falls, disappears. When she becomes panicked and and surprised, where is that focused? Is it focused in the spot where, you know, she is doing what seems like this ritual, or is it out like something has come in? Uh, it seems focused in the center of the room. Okay. I think I'm going to take my axe and, and try to break 
the floor at the center of the room and see if there's something there. Let's say it's it's carpeted here. So okay. there's a carpet from like the 1970s. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll drag the, the blade of the axe across that and, and try to rip the carpet up. So you roll it up and underneath there is a hardwood floor with some incised patterns in it. I think that I don't know enough about magic to know, but I know this is something. Again, I think that I, like with the door when I saw the ghost, I, I put the carpet back over, I put the coffee table back in, and I'm going to go try to find somebody who knows something about magic. That's the point where you hear lots and lots of skittering in the hall outside and in the r- roof above you. I get under the coffee table, <laughs> and I try to be as quiet as possible. The thing starts squishing themselves under the door and like some of them come in for a roof vent. And... <laughs> oh boy. They're going to find you. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I think I'm going to try panic button again. And... How are you going to try and get away? Are you just going to run for it straight out the door or jump through a window outside? Yeah, I think it's out the window and back around to the front door. Cool. Roll it. Like the gardens can't betray me more than once in a day. They've never done that before. <laughs> this house is trying to kill it. Well, honestly, that this is pretty much what it was advertised as. <laughs> For those who got the memo about what it was like. <laughs> oh, I did not share that. <laughs> An eight. So on a seven to nine, you can go or stay. But if you go, it'll cost you. Um, I gotta go. There's too many bugs. So you crash through the window, take one harm from broken glass. I think that that's the cost here. Um, but the bugs don't pursue you. Like, they're, they're just coming into the room. Okay. I'm going to try to head towards uh, where I saw everyone heading last. Yeah. I think you'll probably meet up with everyone else coming back towards the house now. Yeah. Uh, complete with your bug thing in a jar and samples of goo and, and what have you. So, Michael, one of the traditions uh, for Ternium is that they have nifty gadgets. What kind of item would you accept under that? What would you like? I was thinking sort of Ghostbusters-like equipment, you know, to detect, to to capture. uh, Uh, Yeah, no, that seems reasonable, like uh, some kind of ghost detector and a ghost catcher or something a bit more general. Yeah. That's fine with me. So I think I will run to uh, my uh, my room where I was unpacking uh, last night, and I will grab a few items that I brought with me but hadn't put in yep. play yet. Since it applies to the order, I uh, not just a character, I figure I can pass them around for oh, other yeah, yeah, people, definitely. right? So I, I think we should have some really cheapy little uh, handheld ghost detectors or uh, arcana energy detectors. So this is like the equivalent of like those radiation badges that turn a yes. different color if you're exposed. Yes. Kind of level. Yeah, it's like ghost activity kind of thing. Uh, Liam, what's, what do you tell people about the situation once you get handed your little ghost detector? There's some kind of a magic flaw in that bedroom. Woods all covered with, like, uh, what do you call them, runes and markings where they were doing some kind of a spell. Oh, and bugs. The room is also full of bugs now. But I think whatever's going on might be whatever's that magic in there. Roger that. Let's go look at it. Okay, you open the door. This is a lot of bugs. A lot of bugs. (laughs) A lot of bugs. Are you going to close the door again? Yeah. Onyx is currently trying to talk to the bug. In the jar? In the jar. Uh, it responds with, like, little creepy chirpy noises and trying to bite you through the glass. Uh, I'm gonna use magic to communicate with something that I don't share. Oh, okay. Roll. <laughs> Come on, success. Let's go. Oh my god. Again. Again. Uh, five. So, so you like focusing on this, trying to understand what it, what it's communicating. And, like, you find your mind linked to it, and like you, you basically get the sense of what life is for these bugs, and you really want to go into that one room and devour everything that's there, and then you like snap out of it. However, you're still kind of feeling like going to that room and devouring everything you find there. I go in the room. I truly don't. I don't say anything to anyone. I uh, just walk in the room. Okay, you walk in. Um, like, there's a bunch of other bugs there, but they're, obviously they're like your brothers and sisters, so you don't want to devour them. You want to devour the other creatures that are here, which uh, th- there isn't really any. It's just a bit <laughs> annoying. You're, you're feeling quite like there should be something to devour. <laughs> <laughs> Onyx literally just... You hear it because Onyx closed the door behind them. Um, <laughs> you just hear uh, her shouting, Where are they? Where? What am I, what am I killing? What am I eating? <laughs> 
And after like a couple of minutes, you snap out of this and you're like, back to you again. Shit. <laughs> the bugs are kind of ignoring you, though. Oh, this is nice. This is, this is real nice. You, you have a feeling like there's a bit of bug soul still like wafting off you. <laughs> <laughs> Using my newfound connection with my brethren, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like very gently, not stepping on anyone, uh, go over and move the carpet so I can look at the floor. <laughs> okay. When you were remembering being drawn to something, like you realize this is this this thing that's drawn on the floor, that's the thing you wanted to come to before you devoured. Mm-hmm. Do do I recognize it as, like, obviously it's, like, supposed to be summoning something, I assume, but what it could be connected to. Make me an investigate a mystery roll. A nine. Okay. So, yes, you do recognize some of the symbols here. The runes and things drawn on the floor are associated with, like, lost primeval god essence that you have encountered before although perhaps you don't remember exactly when you know there's a sense of familiarity that this is something not that that's somewhat akin to you mm-hmm. is involved here oh i don't know if that's friendly or not but interesting yeah. uh and uh onyx will carefully go back to the door and open it y'all come on in they're fine oh the moment that you open the door and the other people are there the bug starts uh-huh. swarming for them <laughs> <laughs> wait no don't do they're friendly oh shit (laughs) just (laughs) okay roll kick some ass ah there it goes (laughs) now i'm failing oh wow i can help out and at least get you to a seven yeah 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 little little be a big success (laughs) yeah so the power of a heart the two of you can each take two harm from bug attacks and then you do some damage back to them How, how much damage is a hand cannon four and Liam is very bloody. He is unstable and dying. And Onyx, how do you feel about seeing the things you previously felt a strange connection to? Like <laughs> A, attacking your other friends and trying to eat them, and B, being smashed and blown up. I think, um, because you said Liam is like pretty bloody right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. um, typically, this isn't the first time Liam has been bloody in front of Onyx, and Onyx is typically quick to like help. There's hesitation. What? <laughs> why did why why'd you kill them? I I told y'all they were friendly. Did you tell them that we were friendly? I did. I told everybody. I, I said it to everybody. Yeah, I think that they didn't get the message. <laughs> Maybe they just wanted to get a good up close look at you. Uh-huh. I had a good up close look one early on my face. You can still see the bite marks on my nose. You've got. A moment of rest at the moment. So we can just do some mm-hmm. regular first aid and everyone can heal up one harm yeah. from just having a bit of a rest and patch up and maybe something to eat and drink. Does anybody have worse than one point left at the They've been only doing two harm and it has not penetrated my armor. Uh Liam Onyx, either of one still harmed after this? I haven't taken any harm at all, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They're your friends. <laughs> Liam has taken five, and I am unstable. Okay. Please help the human. Time to do some <laughs> use magic to heal one harm. Cool. <laughs> D- uh, does anyone want to help? That would be nice if somebody wants to help. Uh, I can try to help. It's a nine. Cool. Uh, plus one. Okay. Nine. I'll give you the option of either healing one or stabilizing for this one. I think I'll stabilize so that it doesn't get worse as this goes on. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you've got time to, like, you know, you've returned to the kitchen patched up and, like, nothing bad is happening right now. What's the plan now? I mean, you look at the time and it's 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 only been, like, a couple of hours since breakfast. It's been a very busy morning. <laughs> and we didn't have breakfast except the EK and his hot buckets. I leave one of the, the detectors in the room where there's that magic circle or glyph so that we'll get a warning if they come back. And yeah, time to hit the books. You've still got a bug in a jar. Mm-hmm. You've got a bit of information about that might give you some leads on what happened. Or you could go look at more of those black spots on the map and see what you find there. Those are the things that strike my mind anyway. I'm not sure if any of you got other ideas. And we had all the paperwork that they sent us with uh, that had some some details well do you want to make an investigative mystery and if someone would like to help they could uh, help out with that and share some of the reading through old documents and or communing with the bug in a jar 
<laughs> yeah, I could help with the documents because I think I've been through them before. Did the ink dots on the map increase again? The one you investigated has gone, but a couple of new ones have appeared. What the heck? <laughs> uh, so that is a nine on the help out, so you get a plus one. Cool. Okay. Have we used yet the shrines uh, set your dice to a result of nine? No, no one's used it yet. So you could just have a ten if you want. I'm not too bad at investigating mystery, so I'm just going to roll for it. Sure. You should have taken the ten. You should have taken the ten. You should have taken the ten. Experience times. (laughs) So what you find is, in amongst the documents, there is one page that's been mostly redacted that has the date 1942 and the words Order of the Silver Stars, and everything else is black. The Codex of Worlds is a 400 plus page hardcover expansion for Monster of the Week, featuring 13 new team playbooks to help your party work together plus five new settings to take your supernatural monster hunting adventures to entirely new worlds and time periods. The crowdfunding campaign is live now on Backerkit, and to learn more, you can go to evilhat.com.